be introducing a new series uh, starting today and we're going to be talking about what are the most impactful teaching strategies. We have spoken about this even during our other series, for example, in lesson planning, differentiated instruction and so on. Today we are focusing on specific pedagogical practices that every teacher must arm herself with. It's very wisely said that you need to have a reasonable level of your own content knowledge but a very, very high degree of pedagogical knowledge of your own subjects. So my attempt is going to be to take you through some very powerful teaching strategies, regardless of the subject you teach. And for every strategy, we are going to try and give you some examples from syllabus to help you take that home. So we're beginning with what we call the six impactful teaching strategies. And this is what you need to know. And what are these six and we might have done a few like activating prior knowledge. Then there is another strategy which is known as dealing with misconceptions. Probably these are, these are strategies you're looking at for the first time. And then of course the collaborative teaching strategies in which we will speak about the jigsaw as well as another one which is known as reciprocal reading or reciprocal teaching. We will talk about effective graphic organizers and the, the, the world of pedagogy is full of them, but we believe that just six are good enough, regardless of which subject you're teaching. Another strategy of summarizing and taking notes, maybe you haven't thought of that as a strategy, and we will be introducing Cornell note-taking to you, as well as a couple of ideas and developing vocabulary, regardless of the subject that you teach. Now, like I said, that it's possible that we have done some of these. Like activating prior knowledge, we've talked a lot about this in the lesson planning module. So you could go back to that, subscribe and like to Shik Changan because this is all right there in the repertoire that we have been creating for you. Similarly, we have talked about effective graphic organizers, six of them, in yet another series on the Shik Changan's channel, which deals with mastering graphic organizers. So if you subscribe, which is of course free, you could look at these two. So we're not going to be doing those two and therefore we are focusing on four impactful teaching strategies. The first one we will talk about is vocabulary development because every teacher is first a language teacher. Then we will take to you to misconceptions in the second episode. The third episode will talk about collaborative teaching strategies, the jigsaw and the reciprocal reading. Hopefully we'll do both. And the last episode, which is the fourth one, we'll be talking about summarizing and note-taking, where we will introduce this idea about coronal notes. Today, I am focusing on vocabulary development ideas. So what do you know about developing vocabulary? Don't say, oh, that's the job of the language teacher. The vocabulary of every subject is different. There are words which appear in mathematics which do not appear in the English reader. Similarly, there are words in history which do not appear in science and so on. So every teacher must deal with his or her own vocabulary. What does research tell us? First of all, we need to make the words visual. In fact, the week in the vocabulary stands for visual. Second, the words become ours when we create an interaction with them. Otherwise, they remain words in the dictionary. And lastly, we know that multiple exposures to every word is what makes the word ours. Otherwise, we do not understand it the way it needs to be understood. My attempt would be to take you through all these points which research suggests we should be practicing when we are developing student vocabulary. So what do we mean by making the words visual? Usually teachers tell me, oh, you know, we make flashcards, we paint the words, we draw the words and we show them to them. And that's all of those are great ideas. I might just be augmenting what you already know. But if I am adding something new, then that would be great. So one of the ways in making the words visual is the word itself expresses what the word means. Like you have the clock on my screen or the bird or the fall or even a mirror which is reflecting, a collide which is colliding, a slice which is getting sliced off, and it's endless. The look, the tsunami wave, as well as the edge, the hook, the summit, and hundreds of such word, 
being illustrated are available to you if you know where to search. If you don't know where to search, do ask me the question in your question box or in the comment section of this video and I'll be very happy to direct you to the right kind of sites so that you don't waste your precious time. Shiksangan is here to give it to you in a very quick capsule. That's one way of doing it. There is another idea of word art. The stitch is written in cross stitch, rainbow in the rainbow colors, crave as in a craving for food. Are you on intermittent fasting? That's the new fad. So if you're hungry, then there are teeth and there's a hamburger and that's the way crave is written. Elephant as an elephant, grow as in growth as the, as the image depicts, splash as in the, the way the water splashes or paint splashes, music with instruments of music, the shark in the shape of a shark on fire. Well, winter is still far away. We are sweating it out here in India, but that's the way you can probably do word art, drip as in water dripping and so on. This is what is arts integration really. What else is art integration? But what is the goal, the goal of the word art? It's just to make the meaning clear by creating an art out of the actual text of the word. You know, there's no big uh, rocket science in bringing in art integration. You can do it in these small ways as I'm showing you even through vocabulary. Let's see what else we have for you here. Here's a wonderful vocabulary teaching idea. Uh, you might or might not have heard of it. Uh, Chikshangan makes it a point to introduce this to everything that we do. We have a whole lot of ideas for developing vocabulary. This episode is not going to capture everything. If you need to know more, if you'd like to know more, do write to me in the comment section. So what is the tip chart? P stands for term, I stands for information, and P stands for picture. So we normally do flashcards, don't we? But look at this beautiful combination. There's a word, there's a meaning of the word, which is what they're calling information, and then you also put in the pictures. So I've taken something from pre-primary, primary, like pile, puddle, bucket, a simple explanation of this word, the meaning. Now that explanation should not have a complex word, otherwise you will need to make yet another tip chart for it. And then I go and put in the pictures. Marvelous idea. When the children are back in school, you can start doing this on one section of your board or a chart papers and you keep developing them as newer and newer words come into your vocabulary. I might show you another one to drive the point home. Here's another tip chart, geography. You could do it in any subject and at Shikshangan we have created hundreds of such tip charts that we help our teachers with whenever we're training them. But you can create your own or you can write to us or you could join us for our vocabulary development program by writing to us. So equator, easy, imaginary line, that's what's important. Of course, a continent, of course, what a globe is, you could do it in every subject. You could even Google tip charts. I'm just facilitating you to be on the path of your own continuous learning. Teacher education is a journey without an end, my friends. You need to continue to grow and continue to learn. Otherwise, contact Chikshangan. So the beautiful thing is that the students also start creating tip charts. And I've just put in a couple of samples of the students to help you realize that this is the way you actually put them onto self-regulated learning. Do you have any questions? That was my se section on vocabulary. The first strategy I wanted to mention out of the four. If you have questions, like and subscribe to our channel, write in the feedback in the comment section. I'll be only too happy, only too keen to answer all your questions. The second episode will bring you another strategy. Look out for it.